So for this next video, I'm going to be showing you a little bit of how you can utilize the content library uh, to make a quick character and all the cool tricks uh, that you can use inside of Character Creator. So here I'm just selecting my hair cards and I'm going up to the convert button and I'm converting it to the digital human hair shader. Um, and this gives you a lot of cool uh, options to mess with transmission and a lot of cool aspects of realistic hair. It's a lot more accurate than the PVR shading. So here I'm going through and I'm using the edit normals uh, that's in the modify panel from the top. And I'm just mod ed editing the normals for a 45 degree uh, auto smooth. So when you bring your geo in from ZBrush, it doesn't actually bring in the proper normals. Um, so you need to just, uh, if you have any hard surface things, using the auto smooth to edit the normals is going to solve a lot of problems that you'll have with uh, shading. So I'm just going through all the objects individually, clicking and auto smoothing these. And I'm just changing the amounts. Um, the, the number is basically the, the angle at which the, it's going to smooth at. I just wanna make sure I go through and do it for everything that's hard surface because that's where I'm gonna get the most issues. Anything that's smooth like cloth is probably going to be okay with a lower amount or sorry, a, a higher amount. <laughs> All right, so here let's talk about the um, modify panel here. So this is a really cool new attribute where we can just layer on effects over top of each other in the content library. So you can grab oily skin, you can grab lip details, you can layer in freckles, and then you can bake this all down. So these are super useful as like a pre-texture stage. So you can try to get as much done inside of Character Creator in a very non-destructive manner before you go ahead and texture things that you know are going to be destructive and before you bake the stuff down. So you can just layer it in as if you would in a, in a texturing software, but this way it's already um, inside the software you're going to pose with, it's in the software you're going to rig with, so this is really useful. So I use this for the makeup, I use this for the tattoo, I textured just a, an alpha for a tattoo inside of Photoshop and brought it in as a layer. I did this for the eyebrows, I used one of their content uh, eyebrows, which is what I'm doing here. And I just adjusted the color of the eyebrows and the, the scale and the width of them. And this stuff um, really helped to speed up the workflow for the eyebrows because I knew I wanted something natural. Um, and here I'm just adjusting the hue to be a little bit more pink. So it's matching the hair. Um, and this is basically how I got the eyebrows. So it saved me a lot of time of having to paint my own eyebrows or bake them down. So this was a really good way to iterate and try to make and match the exact ones in my concept. So I'm making them a bit thinner by offsetting them and offsetting the scale a little bit and spacing them out a bit. I'm trying not to make her look surprised because I still want to make, I also want to be careful to make her not look too much like she has an expression. I want to still make sure she's looking neutral. Um, but this is a good way to do eyebrows. Alright, so I'm just going to go to the skin section and then I'm going to change it to leg because I'm planning to add a tattoo, so I know this, so I'm going to just look in the content library for some sort of default uh, tattoo. I'm probably going to, I'm 100% going to make a new one, but at least now I have the general layer set up for myself to just add it on top. Oh, and I guess here I, I see some nails, I might just add these because I need some uh, nail polish and what, you know, save some time by adding some nail polish from the content library and you can change the colors, you can change if it looks matte or not, if they have dirty fingers, anything like that. So this gives you a lot of freedom to be able to change and customize things really quickly. Alright, so this is just adding to the nails underneath the skin. Uh, and you can layer more and more on top if you wanted to. So here is where I'm going to change the color to black to match my concept. So it's like a, like a grayish. 
All right, so I'm gonna look for the tattoo now. So I think I'm gonna use this tattoo, but on the leg. So when you create it, it's going to pop to the section it's meant for. So you're gonna see, you're gonna notice it's on the hand. So I'm just gonna go into the hand and I'm gonna copy it. And I'll paste it into the leg. And now here I can offset it to the exact location that I want it on the thigh. So you can see it moving around and now I can place it here. And then the cool thing is that now that it's in the right spot, I can go up to my alpha and I can replace it with the texture that I've painted for the tattoo. There's tons of settings in here. You can make it look like a really old tattoo on an aged body. Um, and there's a lot of these presets inside of here. You can change the color of the tattoo too if you don't want it to be black. Um, there's a lot of cool tricks in here for this. And whenever you deactivate the editor is when it's baking it all down. So it's going to be heavy when you're using the editor, but when you're not using it, um, it'll all be kind of temporarily baked down. Uh, so basically when you're working, it doesn't bog down your machine. So I'm just renaming my material names because I want to make sure that they're, everything in here is named uh, individually. Alright, so here I'm going to show me importing the new alpha that I painted for the tattoo. So this is a first attempt at the tattoo that I painted. Um, I ended up replacing it with a another alpha, but for the sake of just showing you what I mean, uh, I'll use this one. So here I'm just again offsetting where I want exactly the tattoo, and this allows for a lot of freedom so you don't like when you're texturing the skin, if you texture this in, it's so much harder to move this around the body unless you somehow have a stamp of this and you can just stamp it wherever you want. But this gives you a lot of flexibility. So here's the um, blurring and the contrast that I talked about um, and, and fading of the tattoo. So you can really change so many different aspects of having all this tattoo. So another cool thing you should do when you add a costume in here is go through each object and use the hide body, um, like hide model polygons um, and select them and just click hide. So this will help when you're rigging and you don't have skin popping through the costume at any point. Because I know we have a, a body underneath, which is not always necessary. So hiding the, the polys underneath the costume is a really good step so that you don't have to be really specific with your rig edits. So I just go do that for everything underneath the costume. Another thing I need to do is adjust the weights for some things because this costume is very specific, especially around the knees. I didn't want this metal bending with her knees. So it was following the skinning of her knees. So I had to select all of it and then weight it to just one joint. And same with the hair. I selected all of the hair and just weighted it just to the head uh, joint. And here I'm attaching the guns to the hands so that now the guns will follow the hands. This is something you need to do with any accessories is attach them to a bone. So I'm doing that with the braids and I'm going to do that with the goggles too. Right, and then let's talk about lighting for a little bit. So here are a lot of good content library basic lighting setups. A lot of them are really good, but um, what we can do is we can utilize some of these HDRs and we can use it a little bit. So find one that makes your reflections look really good. I like this one a lot. So I'm going to um, use this as my base for my lighting and then I'm gonna place some of my own lights in here. So I'm, I'm placing a couple lights in here, just, just one for my key, one for my fill light, and one for my rim light. Um, and I will hide the background of my uh, HDR image as well. So here's a point light. This is gonna be used for my fill. So this is just gonna fill the other side, the other dark side of my body. And 
the direction light I'm using as my key, so it's going to be simulating sunlight. And I'm using this as a rectangle light, so that the point light is, is shaped like a rectangle and angled with a fall off towards the body. And here's where I turn off the show sky, so you can see really what's going on. And here I'll just make her grab uh, the hand. So this is again in the content library, we have a hold gun action. And um, we could talk about the, the face puppet. So here you can just change her expression really quickly with any of these. I preferred to adjust her facial expression with the puppet. So um, you're just grabbing certain points and dragging it up like, so click and drag on your screen in the black area up and down and, and left and right. And you can get different certain blend shapes for the face, which is really useful in posing her face. So you can get any which pose you want. So I was trying to match the pose for my concept. Um, and this is what I, this is, this is how I went about doing it. If you click the little eraser icon in the corner, it will erase certain features, uh, or it'll, sorry, it'll erase your selection for those features. So you can select new uh, buttons to mess with. And then in the modify panel is a little more specific. So it's just working the same thing, but with sliders. So you can go into the lip, the nostrils, the eyes, the brows, and you can adjust certain blend shapes based on the sliders of them. So it gives you a lot more control. Right, so the next thing I want to talk about is posing. So there's a lot of good default poses inside the content library, as well as these checking poses. So when you're weight painting and you're fixed, or well, not weight painting, but you're fixing the weighting of your model, I use all the checking poses for this. Um, and the hold gun pose is really useful for me for this uh, specific model, because she's got two guns, so <laughs> it works. Um, but I'm going to use the, um, the posing uh, puppet and I'm going to pose her full body into like a kind of like a running jumping pose. And I'm doing that by selecting the individual bones and rotating them accordingly to pose. Um, and then once you get a good pose that you like, you can actually save this into your own custom slot, uh, which is what I have done as well. So it's in my motion category in my own custom library. So I can make my own poses and you can save these poses and you can apply them to any model going forward, which is really useful. So in order to hide the background and do a render from here, I've gone into my settings and I've turned off my background color and made it black. So I'm able to save a PNG and put my own background behind there if I want to. I'm adjusting my final settings and arranging everything to be the proper focal length of my camera and uh, getting everything finalized. My lights I'm tweaking just a little bit to get darker areas a little brighter. I didn't like how dark uh, beh back by the shoe was, so I'm trying to just get a little more light back there. And I'm setting up my final composition and then I'm just going to go into the render the visual palette and I'm going to you know, turn my ambient occlusion on uh, but just blend it a little less. Um, this adds a little more extra to that. Uh, I'm going to turn my filters off too. Make sure the global illumination is on. I'm rendering a PNG and at the custom size that I want and then you can just click render. So this will set up an image that's a PNG that now you can stick over top of any background you want. All right, so then you can just keep adjusting any lights, you know, as you render and you decide on things, just, I'm just kind of messing with more lights now, um, trying to get a little more color to her face because I feel like the sunlight was kind of washing some of uh, some of it out. So using a little more color to my light from the top is making it feel like a lot more sun is coming down. So just exporting the texture again. 
And here in the camera setting is where you can adjust the focal length of everything. So for this shot, I, th I think a 50 millimeter is the best option for making it feel as accurate to the concept as possible and filling my frame. All right, and here is my final render.